Hey, I'm Hannah. Today I'm shooting self-portraits. This is part one of two. Part two is shooting a model. But first, let's go find some furniture. Today we are shooting a self-portrait that kind of explores my feelings with dealing with ADHD and executive dysfunction and having all the will and the want to do the thing you want to do. To demonstrate that, it's kind of like this feeling of existing and even though there's all these things around you, swarming you, you can't do anything about it, so I'm putting a sofa in a river. So, sofa plan A fell through literally 20 minutes ago. So we've just driven around where I live and we've found sofa plan B. I feel sorry about this person's drive. Mmm, ants. <laughs> Is it still together? Often my ideas stem from things that I find. The unexpected can lead to the most interesting ideas and planning is great but being able to be in the creative process and adapting is where the best can be where the best work comes from and I think if you if you get so caught up in all the things you need to have and it being perfect you'll never get to create anything oh that's so refreshing more natural that way you can see like the man-made walls yeah. <laughs> can you just hold that we got it mine all right lovely i'll just We're good to go? perch here yeah you can come come sit on my sofa <laughs> no you're all right <laughs> come join the sofa crowd. <laughs> so i'm hannah um i have ideas build sets and make photos if this is what you'd consist of building a set. As a kid, like the reality never really lived up to my expectations and the anticipation of what could just be around the corner. So now I build my own. I have a towel you can sit on if you want. No, this is good. Okay. Getting a soggy okay. bum is not the worst of it. <laughs> I think like for people with active imaginations, they could depict something like this in their imagination, but they wouldn't necessarily think to bring it to a picture or to a film. Yeah. So what is it that gets you to be as ambitious as to literally forage for things on the roadsides and then make things <laughs> in places like this? Yeah, um, it's exactly that. It's taking what all the possibilities that the world could be mm. and making it happen. So all the possibilities that my brain imagines, like, ah, oh, touching the clouds or... I mean, I've obviously run in, like, fantasy photography circles, so I see it all the time but mm. photography for me has always been escaping the feelings of a world I can't control so um, really struggling at GCSE maths come home the end of the day I then just go off and do something creative as a way to regain control like all of this is in my control um, if I didn't want to put a sofa in the water I didn't have to put a sofa in the water but I had to do maths <laughs> <laughs> this now, instead of it being like a dreamland, this is now investigating why I felt like I struggled so much. And that was because I had undiagnosed ADHD up until this year. Um, so this is now an explore, exploring those emotions and feelings I feel when I'm at my worst. But then photography makes you get out of that worst. So I started photography with self-portraits. And that's because I was always available when I wanted to be available. So it would be, it, it's normally quite impulsive. It would be like, I'd come home from school and then I'd be like itching to do something. And that's mm. because as someone with ADHD, you, you're craving dopamine. So you're like, I need to do something that's giving me dopamine. So then I would like end up at eight o'clock or nine o'clock or 10 o'clock even go, right, okay. I'm not gonna feel like this anymore. I'm gonna do something about it. And then, yeah. You're I can, gonna do something that makes you feel good. Better, yeah. yeah. And that's how I learnt photography, picking up the camera, self-timer, no lights, just playing and, you know, just seeing the results and then trying something else and seeing the results. 
for tips for 10 years later I'm here. <laughs> what do you think you can expect 10 years beyond this point? Um, so now, career, uh, I suppose career-wise, I always thought I'd be taking photos for money, like as a like typical photography business model. Like I thought that was it, that was me. And then I did that, and I hated it because I was no longer escaping from the world with photography. My whole world was photography, and I couldn't control elements because there's briefs outside of my control. So I'm definitely more of an artist <laughs> than a photographer. Um, so now, I know just about just preaching about creativity and how important that is to install your everyday and claim some of that freedom back. Yeah, um, some creative license. Yeah. And to do what you want to do in, as opposed yeah. to doing what people are commissioning you to do. Yeah, yeah and not having fear of failure and Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like it doesn't matter if you haven't got the camera, just go for it and yeah. just kind of claiming back what, what was once yours as a kid. What you enjoyed about it. Yeah. yeah. And getting back to that instead of having this kind of pressure of the hustle and turn it into a, a job and, you know, the grind. That is like, that was like, that's why I pursued photography as a career. As well as enjoying it, I was like, well, I'm not good at anything else. Mentioning kit, what is it that you are shooting on? Oh, uh, uh, bleh. Canon 5D Mark III um, with an 85mm f1.2. It's the only lens I own, and the only, well, and then I have another camera, but normally to film, film what I'm shooting on. Um, and now I've had that for quite a few years now. I wouldn't, wouldn't change it for the world. The only limit is um, if I want to print for exhibition it's probably not as big as I would like to go because I've had I've used phase ones before, um, but then I've got to work around that, which you'll you'll see, <laughs> you'll see. Okay. Just like shooting, shooting the around the image so you can stitch it together in Photoshop and then editing it together. Yeah. So this is a self-portraiture shoot um, that you've devised yourself. Could you go through with me what the uh, the pros and cons are <clears throat> that come to mind with this sort of scenario? So the pros of self-portrait shoots is that you can, you know, if you have a spare hour, you can just grab your camera, tripod, and just make something, like, instantly. And you're not having to rely on other people, you know, and they might let you down or whatever. But you are available and you, you can just go and do in, like, an hour and make something amazing. The other pro is that um, if you're like me and you visualise what you want in your head, I sometimes struggle to find the words to communicate what I want, but because it's in my head, I know. You can just do it yeah, without like, so, having to yeah, direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just do, and then, um, you know, and then you go, oh, that's not working, but you know what it is in your head that you want. And so, you can tweak it yourself. Yeah. Especially with like um, posing and your facial expressions, I find that I'm just able to do what I want to do. Um, and you cut out the communication part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other pro is that if you're anxious about shooting, learning your camera and flashes, you can just do without having anxiety of letting other people down. Yeah, or wasting people's time. Wasting people's yeah, time. I think there's a massive pressure on that when you're starting out, or even professionally, like not living up to expectations. Yeah. Whereas obviously when you're just by yourself, it's a learning process for yourself more than it is kind of like, yeah, and you can take all the time you need to get what it is that you want. Yeah. And you can have time to think about it and there's a yeah. stress. Um, so like one of my things is that if I do have a, a complicated idea, but for a model, I will kind of like go out and test shoot it with me. <laughs> no one ever sees it, but it's just, it's for my own anxiety. Yeah. Like, actually, okay, what I think will work does work. Yeah. Um, it's a previs, like yeah, a, an yeah. actual physical yeah. previs, yeah, um, yeah. I like it, just a test, a test shoot. Um, and then cons, the bad things about shooting self-portraits, I find that I have to, also not cut corners. There's less control, which means sometimes you have to sacrifice what you want 
because you can't be in four places at once. So I can't be someone waving a smoke and the model and moving the camera and, um, you know, doing the fan or whatever. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so sometimes I end up with like the, uh, the boat shot. I had the self timer in my mouth, the, ti- the um, clicky thing in my mouth. And then sometimes I end up with the smoke under my foot. <laughs> and then like, I'm like doing all these things. Mm. Oh, okay, pose. I like with the boat, I ended up just going, parents, please help. I can't do this alone. Mm. Um, so yeah, sacrificing control is often, it's like a, that will do um, in self portraits. What else? Just the, the lag of going to and from a camera. Yeah, it can pull you out of the moment yeah. as well. Like, yeah. whereas obviously if you're working as part of a team, you can be in fixed positions and yeah. focus more. Yeah. Less to think about, less yeah. to process. Yeah. Um, as well as like a really annoying shutter situate, like button situation. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love your contraption that you've got sorted. I mean, it works. You make it work for you, which yeah. is great. Well, thanks for. Uh, thank you very much for sharing today. Um, everything you've done, I think what you've made here is amazing. So um, I'll see you in the next video where you work with a model instead of working just by yourself. But cool, sounds good. Yeah, so uh, clean this up when you're ready. <laughs> <sighs> so that is the self-portrait shoot. Let me know what you think. Leave any questions down below. Subscribe to Wax Photo and I'll see you in the next one.